Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Darth Cinema, and today, guys, we have Ruby Volume 4, Episode 2, titled Remembrance. And I'm starting to like the format that they're going uh, for these episodes right now. If they're keeping it at is each episode visiting a member of Team Ruby, or at least giving us a little glimpse into their lives uh, before cutting back to Ruby and the team, I actually like that. I don't, I, nothing felt out of place with this episode. And it really gave us an, a nice glimpse into uh, Weiss's life before she became part of the team and before season one. Uh, not in a flashback form, but we got to see the environment she grew up in, which also, in, uh, in many respects, introduced us to uh, three brand new characters. We were introduced to her brother, which we had heard nothing about until now, uh, Whitley Schnee, voiced by Howard Wang. Uh, we also got to finally see uh, her father, Jacques Snee, voiced by Jason Douglas, and probably the most fun, playing the butler as always, J. Michael Tatum from Black Butler plays Klein. Klein is the uh, Schnee family butler during that time. We also get to see uh, James Ironwood again, looking a little bit more disheveled than usual, and we get to see a little bit more into, uh, into Jean's still broken mind after the events of Volume 3. So let me go over kind of the events of what happened uh, during uh, volume dur uh, during this particular episode. So we start off the episode pretty much looking at uh, Weiss uh, just kind of walking through the halls of the Schnee Mansion. Again, it, it's it looks pristine, and again, everything's white and silver and whatnot. So it's obviously a very regal-looking place, but the one thing it does give off is that it, it just seems very cold, very foreboding. Um, and it also helps just the lighting and everything. Again, giving a testament to the animation for this season, it looks fantastic. Um, the lighting really came into play here, and I just think uh, the new character models and everything just look absolutely gorgeous. Uh Immediately, we are uh, introduced to uh, Whitley, uh, who looks to be uh, Weiss's younger brother. I'm assuming he's a younger brother. I don't know, guys. I'm not getting a good vibe off of him. I don't. I I know that he kind of wishes her luck with her father because I, I think it's universal that they don't like their father that much. But still, it, it's just I I get I get this feeling in my gut that you just don't trust this guy and I and my alarm bells were going off with uh Whitley so much so I'm expecting maybe him and uh Weiss to butt heads later on down the line but I, I'm not sure let me know what you guys think about him because I, I I'm, can trust this guy as far as I can throw him though in retrospect since he's a character on my computer I'm pretty sure I could throw him pretty far we also uh find out about some of the events that have been going on in uh Atlas after after the events of Volume 3, with essentially all dust imports being embargoed by the military that was Ironwood's doing, and that really hasn't earned him any brownie points with the uh, Schnee family, particularly Weiss's father, Jacques. So apparently they were friends for a long time, as they are on a first-name basis, but we learned a very heated argument that really ever since... Uh, the fall of Beacon, there's been a falling out between the two, something that you can see Ironwood actively trying to mend, but Jox is having none of it and really doesn't care for Ironwood at all. Uh, we cut from there and we end up going to uh, Team Ranger, because Team Junior does not sound cool at all, I don't care what you say, John. And we see that them uh, heading down the road, looking for a village that... Uh, Jean grew up in with his sisters, or they visited with their sister, with his sisters, seven sisters, and after a quite a, a fair bit of comedy as far as uh, Jean retelling what it was like growing up with his sisters, we find that the village in question is ransacked pretty much. There's rubble, there's smoke, and also there's a dying huntsman there, so... And obviously, this is really interesting because the first time we've seen blood in a while in the show, you if you remember back to a lot of the other characters who have died, there really hasn't been that much blood shown in Ruby. So to see it again, it's just, it's, it's a small thing because it's not like he's decapitated or whatnot. He's just 
has a chest wound, but it was something that caught my attention. So it makes it feel like they're not shy from showing blood now in uh, in Ruby at all. So it, it's kind of one of those things. Also with Ruby, we find that she is frequently waking up in the middle uh, in the middle of the night, hearing Pura's voice in her head. I really hope that this isn't some contrived way to bring Pura back because I think ultimately her death will serve to better the other members of Team Juniper, Nora, Ren, especially Jean, because this is, I believe, like a big test for Jean to push forward despite the losses he's had, I, like the loss of a, a village he's always been to, like with his family, he's lost Pira, and it, it, it seems like everything is going wrong for Jean, but I want to see him reach that point where he can overcome this, and he doesn't have to rely on other people to do it. I know the moment's coming, I just really, as much as I love Pira's character, I don't want her to come back. I know that might get me some uh, dislikes from the Pira fans, I just feel that if they try to like resurrect her in any way it's just gonna seem contrived and the whole sacrifice does really doesn't mean anything but then again it depending on how they execute it i might be wrong but moving forward uh we also see a little bit of uh cutting back to wife we see more of the relationship between her and her father definitely you can tell that it's not a loving relationship uh, judging from this episode alone, you can tell the kind of man that uh, Jacques Chini is, and that is that he is he's a conniving man who just seeks to uh, to increase his own self worth. Like he's only looking out for himself at the end, uh, which is very clear though when he was pointing out the fact that the dust embargo that Ironwood and the military placed on Atlas was costing him millions. And also, when he's uh, talking about doing a uh, charity concert, so to speak, and you think, oh, maybe this is a good idea. You know, you just show people, hey, not, not everything ain't all bad. But then you find out that, nope, Jacques intends to use his daughter Weiss, who was at Beacon when it fell, to just show, hey, look at this. My daughter's a hero and all that and just kind of parade her around just to improve the image of the Schnee family and the Schnee Dust Company overall. And you can tell that Weiss has grown a lot in character because she takes issue with this. This is kind of that one of those points where she doesn't want to be shoved in the limelight. And what I feel is a, is a very significant improvement for her character. She's not the stuck-up brat that we saw in Season 1. She is an actual three-dimensional character. She's moved onward. And that was my biggest problem with her when I first saw Weiss was I thought, please don't tell me that this chick is going to just be the bratty bully throughout the entire show. And thank God it's not because she's actually interesting to watch. This brings us to another portion of the episode when she exits the room with her father that we see Klein, uh, once again voiced by J. Michael Tatum or Sebastian from Black Butler, though obviously not as... Uh, graceful, it appears, as Sebastian was. But then again, we've only seen him for maybe 30 seconds at most, so hopefully we'll see a little bit more going on. Uh, he's offering Weiss a cup of coffee, but sees that she is quite depressed, and then does something very, very weird. His personality seem to change, and his eye colors change as well. It really threw me off. I really wasn't expecting this to happen. Weiss seems to know all about this because she's laughing at it. And it's, again, something that appears completely normal. Again, I have nothing to add here for this. It's just weird. His eyes go from red to blue to gold. It really just makes me scratch my head. So if you guys have any ideas as to why this happened... Let me know, because I'm. this makes me more interested to see more of Weiss um, than some of the other characters, because, again, more questions are popping up. The one thing I was worried about is, are these characters, are these new characters going to bog down this season? Hopefully, if they're, if they're being treated like this, they're fine. I have absolutely no problem. They... Uh, 
show them in for a couple of seconds, and then they're gone. They're spoon feeding us a little bit of information at a time. So that was uh, that's probably the best way to go about it for 15 minute episodes. Uh, then we finally get to the last part of the episode, which is Ruby hearing Pyrrha's voice in her dreams. Again, this is something that's been happening off and on throughout the episode. And then finally she wakes up, but she can still hear Pyrrha's voice, and Jean is gone. Upon investigation, she finds that Jean is practicing uh, exercises with his sword and shield, while a scroll is playing a video of Pyrrha, instructing him on how to wield the weapon properly. This is probably the most heartbreaking part of the episode because you can see that Jean really hasn't recovered from Pyrrha's death at all. It's still, you can see the look on his face when he takes a break from the exercise. It pains him to even go through this because it's just a reminder of that he was unable to do anything during Volume 3. Now, I know there was nothing he could have done that would have changed the outcome, but it still is on his conscience, and he blames himself for that. We don't get a verbal confirmation of that, but it's very plain to see to anyone that he's just beating himself up over this. I'm really interested to see where this arc goes for him later on. Uh, this is something that obviously is going to be a major theme for his character, and... If done well, I think it could make Jean probably one of the most interesting of all the characters on the show. And it's it's funny that how this all started, how Team Juniper started, was supposed to be the B characters. But now they've taken such an integral part to the plot that we care about them and their emotional struggles just as much as we care about Ruby and her team's struggles. So a couple of questions from the episode today, guys. Uh, a side note, you have Nora and Ren recognize, uh, look, seemed like they recognized the symbol of the bandits who attacked the village. Do you think that that is tied somewhat to their past? Uh, hopefully we'll get to learn a little bit more about their past. It probably just the 20 seconds of backstory until next season, because they're, they're going to drag that on as long as possible, I feel. Uh, do you think, how do you think that, uh, Jean's whole arc with, <laughs> Jean's arc, yeah, I get it. Uh, how do you think his arc with coping with Pyrrha's death, how do you feel that's going to end? And are you interested in seeing more of Weiss's story with Whitley, with Klein, with Jacques? And how do you think that's going to end up, uh, concluding with this season? Uh, I don't think this season... I think the season's going to end with the team getting back together. I don't really see them, uh, Rooster Teeth, keeping the team separated for the entirety of, like, for, like, multiple seasons. I see them getting back together by the end. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, definitely, once again, an improvement over last season. Your, your characters are developing quite steadily, and I absolutely love it. So, Rooster Teeth, nice, nice job on that. Uh, the environments look fantastic. The lighting was great. And it's just such fun to watch. And it's now taking more of a dramatic turn. And while there is quite a bit of comedy into it, that the comedy does not dominate the entire show. It's a nice balance. And I find that's the most enjoyable thing about Ruby. I know there were some people who liked the more lighthearted aspect of it. But this is keeping more in line with what the original... Uh, red trailer was meant to be. So let me know what you guys thought about the episode in the comments below. My name is Darth Cinema. If you liked this video, please leave a like, comment on your thoughts. Perhaps I'll answer them in the next video. And consider subscribing for more Ruby content. I will be making a Ruby video at least once per week. I'm looking to make a retrospective on Ruby Chibi this week. I actually just got back from a wedding, so I... Uh, literally ha came home, walked in the door, watched the episode, and made this video. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, my name is Dark Cinema. As always, I will see you guys next week for my next review of Ruby Volume 4, Episode 3. Take care, guys, and I'll see you later.